So in part one, we designed our character. So now we just need to create the rest of the body parts like the neck, the torso, the, the arms, the legs, and so on. And you can do that inside the head. Or if you go to object mode, place your cursor somewhere, then shift A and go to grease pencil. And then you could then add blank. If we go to draw, change this to the brush. And because this is a blank stroke, we do need to set up a few things. Go to the material tab, select the material icon and solid stroke. And then we can add a layer, change this to black. We don't have the fill material, so we would need to go back to materials, add another material, change that to the solid fill, which all this can be a bit of a pain. So instead of doing this, I'm just going to go back to object mode and delete it. I'm going to select the head and then add a new layer. Let's call this neck. And obviously go to draw mode, select the pen, change this to solid stroke. You can draw a neck and we don't want the neck joined in any way. We want to make sure that every body part is separate. So that's the neck, that'll be the torso, that'll be the upper arm, lower arm, and then hand. So that's the idea. So just draw a neck and, and then let's add a new layer. Let's call this neck fill. And make sure this fill is underneath the lines. Now obviously we can't fill this area if we tried. Let's select a colour. We can see down here it says unable to fill unclosed areas. So that's why we're going to select the brush, change this to the solid fill. And remember we can use like a lasso selection and fill it in that way. Let's make sure we select our colour again. And then for this what I'm going to do is just give this a bit of an area above. Like that. And also below. Whilst we're here, I'm just going to lock these two layers so we can't select them, which is the head. Let's go into edit mode and select this. And I'm going to press P, which will bring up this separate strokes menu. And we want to separate by selected strokes. Now, once we've done that, let's go back to object mode. You can see we now have the head and also now this neck. So you can see it's a lot easier rather than adding a new stroke and then trying to set everything up. Whereas if we just select the head draw each of the body parts and then separate them. So you'll notice when we select the head again, we still have these two layers, but they're actually empty. There's nothing on them, so we can just get rid of them. So now we just need to do the same thing for the body, the upper arm, lower arm, the hand, upper leg, lower leg, and the foot. So I'm going to do that real quick and I will be back in a second. So there we go. I've drawn the rest of the body parts. We zoom out, we can see we have the neck, the torso, the upper arm, lower arm, the hand, the upper leg, lower leg and foot. So as I mentioned, I drew them in the head and then in edit mode, you just select each part and then press P and it'll bring up the menu and you can separate it. It's also a good idea to name each of your body parts. You'll also notice that I only did one side because obviously we can just duplicate it so before we do that, I'm going to add some armature. So I'm going to click and add the cursor. If you want to see the cursor, go over here to this option. And then 3D cursor, select this. And make sure we're in object mode. I'm going to shift A, go to armature and add a single bone. So that's a bit too high. I'm going to press G and move this down a bit. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to select this top part here and press G, just move this up. Now I'm going to press E to extrude just a little bit, then E to extrude again. This is going to be the neck bone. Then E to extrude one more time, which is going to be the head. Now this bone here, I'm just going to select it and then delete it just so we have this separation. I like to have a little separation between these joints, but it's not always needed. So that's the head. Then again, select this point here, it's E to extrude. Let's go down here, E to extrude again. E to extrude again, and we'll come back and do the hands in a minute. Now I'm going to select this bone, delete it, there we go. We jump out of edit mode by pressing tab. I'm going to select the arm here and bring this back, just so we know how long these bones need to be. 
grab this arm, bring this back, and we can grab the hand as well. We could do the same for the neck and the head. Now, if your neck looks like this, uh, just press G and then press Y and just move it back a bit. And then, and again, let's position the legs as well. Now we can go back to the armature, jump into edit mode, and then reposition these. To the hand, E to extrude just a little bit, and then E to extrude again. Select the bone and delete it. Now we can grab this bone and move it back. Let's do the same thing for the leg. Select the bottom part here, E to extrude. E to extrude. And you guessed it. It's pretty simple. Just do a little one and then this foot. Select this and this. Delete the bones and there we go. Now we might as well copy the arms and legs over, so go back to object mode, select all the arm pieces and the leg pieces, shift D, move this over, then we can rotate, so press R, Z, 180, and then just move this over, just select this arm here, G, X, that's okay, but we can see this arm is now popped out, so select the hand and the lower part of the arm, press G and press Y. Now select the armature, edit mode, and we could just copy these over. So Shift D on the X, or you can add these bones in again. It's up to you what you do. I'm just going to add these in again. So now we have an armature and we could go to pose mode and we could move these things by rotating them. But that's kind of boring and doesn't look good. So we're going to go back to object mode and we're going to be using IK constraints. And if you've not done it before, don't worry. It's really simple to do. And when you've set it up once, you don't need to worry about it again. So first, let's start with a head. This is only going to rotate. So we're going to need something to control this. Uh, let's add an empty. I'm going to add the cursor up here. Shift A. Go to empty. And you can add any empty that you want. I'm going to add a circle. And scale this way down. I'm going to hit control and then press spacebar so with your armature selected. Let's go into pose mode. Then let's select the head bone. And then down here we have the bone constraints properties tab. So select this, open this up, and we just want to copy the rotation. Now we need to give this a target. I'm going to select the eyedropper tool, then select the empty. Now we can see the bones moved, which is not good if we just rotate around. So just play around with these until you jumps back into the correct position. And then now if we go back to object mode and select our empty and then press R to rotate, we can see that the head bone rotates. Now we just want the head to rotate as well. So select the armature, go into edit mode, make sure we have the head bone selected, which we do. Go back to object mode. Now select the head stroke, hold shift and select the armature. Then if we press control P, it'll bring up this menu. And we just want to set the parent to the bone. You can see the head's now just moved out of the position. Uh, we can select the head and just move it down. So now if we select this and press R to rotate, head now rotates. So anytime you want to parent one of these things to the bone, we first need to select the armature. We then need to go into edit mode. We then need to select the bone that you want to parent the thing to. Jump back to object mode. Select the body or whichever part that you want to be parenting. Hold shift. Select the armature, press Ctrl P, then select the bone. So there's quite a few steps, but when you've done it a few times, it becomes second nature. So now when we move the armature, the body and the head move along as well. So let's go through now and parent all these objects to each bone. So I'm just going to repeat it a few times. It kind of helps me remember as well. Select the bone that you want. Jump out of edit mode. Select the object that you want. Shift, select the armature. Control P, set the parent to the bone, and then reposition this. Again, just repeat the process. So the biggest thing is just jumping back into the armature and selecting the different bone. If you don't change the bone, you'll find that the object is parented to the wrong bone, and that's why. So I've selected the object, shift, select the armature, control P, bone. 
then reposition. And you guys get the idea by now. I'm gonna go for the rest of them doing the exact same process and parenting each of these objects to each of these bones. So I'll do the rest of these and I'll be back in a second. So once you've parented all your pieces to your armature, everything should move as it should. Now we can add the inverse kinematics. And again, it's pretty simple. We just need to make sure we have the bone selected. So select the armature, go to pose mode. You'll notice it only works in pose mode. Then let's select this lower arm bone here, down to bone constraint properties. And this time we're gonna select inverse kinematics. Now straight away it's asking for a target and we don't have any target. So let's go back out of pose mode to object mode. Let's add the 2D cursor around here and we can shift A. Add another empty. Again, I'm gonna add a circle, scale this down. I'm also gonna shift D and move one over here. This is gonna be for this joint here. So I'm gonna scale this way down and, and we might as well select both of these. Shift D and move these over. So go back to the armature, go back into pose mode, then select the bone. For example, if we had this bone selected, it would just show you the copy rotation. So again, make sure you have this bone selected for the target, go to the eyedropper tool and, then, and select this empty here. We will come back in a minute and talk about the pole target, but for now we can move on. But we do need to change this chain length to two. Then if we go to object mode, select this, press G. We can now see we have a bendy arm, which we can move. Let's do the same thing for this arm. So select the armature, go into pose mode, select this lower arm bone here, bone constraints, inverse kinematics, target, select this empty, chain length set to two. Go back to object mode and make sure it works. Nice. Now this is a good time to bend it and go to the extremes and we can see now it doesn't look good here. So you would need to move your arm around. So that's the arms, pretty simple. Let's go back to the armature, jump into pose mode, select the top arm bone. We're gonna give this a copy location constraint. The target is gonna be this empty here. And then just do the same thing for this one. Copy location and it's going to be this empty. So now when we move this empty, the arms can be detached, but we could use this for loads of different things. For example, if we have both of these selected, start to rotate it. Maybe he's kind of doing a dance. <laughs> I don't know. Um, same thing for the hips. You can rotate and, and give maybe a kind of sexy walk. Uh, the same thing for the legs now. It's the same principle that we did for the arms. It's the same thing for the legs. So I'm just going to select this empty, Shift D, Drop one here, shift D, drop one here, shift D, drop one here, make this bit bigger. Shift D over here. And I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because again, it's the same principle, I don't wanna waste your time. So, so I'll select your armature, go to pose mode, select the bottom leg, bone constraint, it's gonna be an inverse kinematic. The target is gonna be this empty down here. Chain length is gonna be two. Select this one. Copy location, target is gonna be this empty here. And, and then just repeat the process. So now we have this, I'm gonna add another empty. Let's place the cursor here, shift A, empty. Let's add another circle scale this down a bit and then I want to select this empty hold shift select this one shift select this one and this one and then finally select this one these two and these two are going to be parented to this center one so I'm going to hold control press P and then object and there we go you could also parent the armature to it so select the armature shift select this control P object so now if we select this empty, we can move things around and you can jump, dance, um, yeah, do whatever you want. Now one thing you might notice if we select this and we press G, 
you can see some of the empties uh, stay in place and he kind of moves away as if there's just been an explosion I guess uh, but yeah what we need to do is add one more empty which is going to control everything so shift a go to empty add a cube I'm going to scale this on the Y on the Z and then now we just want to select this empty here shift select this one this one this one and these two then shift select the box control P and set parent to object so now when we move this box this is kind of our control box so anytime we move this we move the whole character when we move this we can have independent movement and again same thing for the legs and the arms now one thing you'll notice the way the arm bends maybe you want it to bend in the opposite way we will need to add a couple more empties so shift A go to empty and this one I'm going to add a single arrow grab it and move it over here now if I go back to the armature go back to pose mode then I'm going to select the IK constraint bone which is this one and then we're going to give this a pole target so use the eyedropper tool select the empty and now we can see it's just flipped the other way so if I go back to object mode select this you can see it now it only bends this way and if you want you can change the pole angle to be 180 degrees and we can see it's now flipped in the correct direction and at any time we can move this empty and flip it so if you want the arms to be pointing one way or the other now we can do the same thing for this arm so shift D select the armature jump into pose mode select the bone select the pole target and we don't need to change the angle because it's already correct unless you do want to change it go ahead and change it sometimes you might need to go minus 180 uh, sometimes you don't <laughs> it's entirely up to you again just play around with that and the same thing for the legs and select the leg make sure you add another empty and add the pole target and there we go so that's pretty much it for 2d rigging it's pretty simple uh, we could get more complex into this I would use a lattice instead of uh, instead of splitting these parts into two if you guys want a video on that let me know in the comments below I'll see what I can do hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did be sure to hit that like button as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time